Oh, <clears throat> I uh, had a, I did a thing here. Uh, I did a thing today. Tried something on this bike. I uh, wanted to kind of see if I could make a little video about what happened here, what I did today on this, and uh, see if it uh, helps anybody with any ideas or, or questions. Um, I had a 5010 uh, 2021 C-Build XT. And, you know, obviously that's a 27.5, 27.5 bike. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, Santa Cruz just came out with a Bronson. So I was kind of thinking it'd be pretty cool to try a mullet on a 50.10 as sort of a mini Bronson. Um, it did kind of have, had a 29 or fork laying around, but it was a 150. Um, it's a Helm 150 coil. It's a really sweet fork I have on a different bike. It's also over forked, but anyway, I just, <clears throat> that's what I had available. I, <clears throat> I went from, you know, the 140 that's stock on the, it had a 140 pike stock on it. And I put this helm on just cause that's what it, that's what I had. Uh, would have probably tried going to a 130 since I was already going with a bigger wheel. A lot of people that I've heard and talked to have suggested, you know, if you're going to do a mullet on an existing 27.5, Potentially you want to size it down 10 millimeters and not up 10 millimeters, which is what I actually ended up doing. So, you know, technically 20 mil higher than you might really want if you were trying to do this more long term. I'm just trying it because I because I could. Um, and again, I, I think if I had a 130 fork, I would have put that on and, and um, probably been a little more happy with it. But I. I did enjoy riding it like this and I learned a few things. This is just my first, I've ridden a mullet before. It was, I think it was a 69 or something way back in the day. <clears throat> you know, with, with mullets kind of, it didn't really ever catch on, but now that uh, the World Cup riders are winning, having fastest times on the mullet uh, wheel configuration, a lot of the companies this year especially have really, you know, with the transition patrol going that way, uh, Santa Cruz doing the Bronson and the Chameleon um, in a mullet. Um, so some bigger companies are trying to, well, they're not really, I guess, transition not bigger, but you know, really reputable, awesome companies are giving this a go and seeing what what they can do. Um, I think, let's not let it blow over with the wind. It's pretty windy today. Crazy, crazy windy. Um, anyway, um, three points, three points of conduct. So yeah, so riding it just now, immediately when I, uh, I did a few things on setup, I, I was already planning on lowering the stem, but because this fork was on a different bike with a much shorter head tube, I, I didn't really even have a choice. Uh, I didn't have enough steer on this, on this frame, so I had to slam the stem, which is pretty much what I wanted to do anyway, so no big deal. And again, this is again, just a test, temporary thing, so I'm not worried about it, but um, that worked out. I was already planning to, to do that. End up having to, you know, kind of roll. The, I rolled the bar slightly. I felt like that was necessary, going with the bigger wheel and the 20 mil, or the 10 mil. Sorry, 10 mil of additional height. Uh, and then I did also change, you know, which is obvious when you raise your front end of your bike. Your seat is going to do this. I went a little bit even more probably than it, even even more nosed maybe than I normally would, um, just because you know with the seat angle slacking out, I figured put yourself in aggressive climbing position with the seat angle you know um i'm not too been out of shape about the seat angle being a little bit slacker because i mean you can always adjust your body on the saddle a bit and you can use body english to keep your tire from sliding from spinning out and keep your front end on the ground it's not that hard to shift your body a lot of the companies are trying to get the suspend you know the geometry optimal it's where the bike does a lot of the work for you and you just kind of sit there and pedal and you don't even have to really think about you know, body position and, and weight, you know, and kind of <clears throat> balancing that between front and back. And that's great. You know, it's good. That's what they should do. They should make the bike as perform as well as absolutely possible. But I don't think it's that big a deal. You know, if your seat angle changes by a degree, you can certainly overcome that um, without much hassle, really. Uh, one other cool thing, I, you know, obviously it's great is the bottom bracket is going to come up. I always feel like 27.5 bikes are really bad about pedal strike, and I, I hate that. It's one of the, my least favorite, other than getting your head hit on a, a headache low branch and getting knocked off your bike. Uh, 
that's worse. Uh, and then of course real bad crashes are worse, but like just general riding stuff, paddle strike is one of the worst freaking things. It sucks. It's so jarring and it, you know, tears up your cranks and just throws you offline and you know, whatever else, all that crap. Um, anyway, raising the bottom bracket, good, always good in my, well, not always good, but good in, good in this case on a 27.5 to me. I just think they're too low in general. I, I just find the ground far too often with the crank arm. Um, so the other thing that I did change that I did notice was, was kind of needed. Um, in the 27.5 configuration, this bike was already, the suspension on the, the rear, you know, the rear shock was uh, already set up really nice for my weight and just riding style. Uh, the front fork, you know, obviously is different anyway. It's a totally different fork. And with this coil, you do have low speed, high speed compression. So I did, I did play with that stuff, but that's, that's kind of separate from what it did to the rest of the bike. Um, the rear of the bike, I felt like I did need to stiffen up, you know, add some compression to the rear shock uh, just because I think just it actually got my body weight back on the rear this is that much more and it was noticeable and it, I was getting quite a bit much more bob and like pedal pedal bob basically um well it wasn't so much pedal bob it was just small bumps were really going fairly deep into the travel um and I, again I think it's just because I had loaded my body weight that much further back um so I just made a minor couple of adjustments to that and that really kept it much higher in the travel during during the ride um so that was cool i mean the front front 29 inch wheel obviously just motored over everything um i haven't been riding enough lately so it's kind of hard for me to tell whether i could say it's still that it's fast right now it didn't feel fast today you know i always feel like 27.5 bikes are pretty slow but um i didn't feel fast today but i think that was just me i think the bike was pl plenty fast and definitely faster with the big wheel um and it, you know, certainly just ran over small bumps, but I had that low speed compression dialed in pretty good on that helm fork and that fork is awesome. So, I mean, that's also part of it. It's just really, really supple and plush and then it's got awesome high speed compression control too. So if you take a big hit, it's fine. So that is an awesome fork if you're looking for a, a 29er coil. That's, I know it sounds weird, but you know, if you haven't thought of, you know, most people have heard of this fork already, but usually coils, the low end stuff, this is definitely not anything remotely like a cheap coil. It feels like the best air fork you've ever, ever felt. It technically it does have air, but it's a coil fork. Um, <clears throat> so however that works, I don't even know, to be honest. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it other than, you know, manuals and stuff like that. Getting the, the front end of the bike up was really easy because I think I was already, you know, I was halfway there. <laughs> The front end was just that much higher and the bars were higher in relation to, you know, the stack overall, overall height, uh, you know, axle to crown and everything just kind of had it already in a position that made that, that front end want to come up pretty easy. Um, jumping it felt great. I don't, I don't really know. I just kind of, I didn't notice any, any negatives whatsoever. I mean, the air it definitely wanted to, to whip around and play. Um, just hit the jumps over at the church at free ride 512 and it, you know first time i ever rode the bike like this so i wasn't like used to it but it felt completely at home i didn't feel out of place at all it felt like it wanted to do what it was supposed to do um i think that's it's about all i could really come up with there's just those those adjustments that had to be made and i think you could ride it just like this with the 150 i don't even think it's a big deal but um I do think one difference between keeping that shorter it, that shorter um, travel fork under it and keeping the head tube a little steeper, obviously it doesn't feel like, you know, you get on some bikes and they feel like they're on rails and they're just like kind of a, it's like a razor blade going through the woods, you know, it's just right on edge and you can cut direction and all that. This was a little bit floppy, a little bit floppy. Um, it, it didn't like go too choppery like moto chopper feeling where it's flopping around tractor style it, it still felt pretty controllable but i could feel it a little bit in there just because you know it wasn't really right um, i think getting the maybe even just a 140 fork just staying with the same length that already had would have been okay because you'll get a little more downhill capability with that bigger wheel and keeping the suspension the same travel but if you really want the ride, bike to ride like a 5010 but with a bigger wheel the 130 fork would probably be the way to go and it's still going to be snappy and 
and you know quick and nimble the way the bike feels when it's got a 27.5 i think for me i just can't even hardly stand to look down and see a 27.5 in the front i'm so used to seeing that big wheel it's just weird you know it's one of those things you get used to after about a week you get used to it and then everything looks normal but i like seeing the 29 out there at least that kind of makes me forget that the rear is not <laughs> um so anyway pretty cool it's fun to play around like that i'll probably do some more uh you know, I think I am going to get another fork that's actually for a different bike, but I'm going to put it, put it on here for first because it's going to be a 130 29er that I do need for a different build anyway. Um, so I'm going to try that out and maybe swap them in and out, you know, give them, you know, ride this one and then switch to the 130 and see what the difference really is. Maybe I can give you an update after that and see how that feels compared to this. Thanks. Um, take her easy.